Good evening and welcome to SIMS, which is one of the meetups that sits under the Ipswich and Suffolk Tech Network. And altogether, we have about 15 different meetups. We're currently refreshing the website, which is www.istn.org.uk. So soon you will be able to see all of the activity from the groups, the group founders, the upcoming events, and basically in one place, be able to populate your entire uh, upcoming months with all of the tech events and education that you could possibly need across everything really from IOT back out to digital creative. So this evening we are one of the, we're the Suffolk, Ipswich and Suffolk Tech Network, so we're very Suffolk focused on the area that we live in and we are here this evening to hear from our local university. So we have Beth Johnson and Beth Sour Sowersby who are both business development managers at the University of Suffolk which has had a lot of changes in the last 12 months. So really we're here um, to catch up on that and make sure that we can spread this news to local institutions so that everybody knows what the college is doing and where how it's positioning itself as the centre of the business community. So Beth and Mike, I'm going to pass over to you guys to introduce yourselves. And um, you, again, if you, however you want questions, just ask everybody to deliver them the way that suits you best. We're pretty easy here. So over to you guys. Okay, thanks, Sam. And uh, it's good to be here. So my name's Beth Sowersby. I'm one of the business development managers. And uh, this is Mike. I'll let Mike say hello quickly. Yeah, just real quick. Uh, Mike Johnson, um, business development manager, one of Beth's colleagues. And yeah, we're part of a new team that was brought in just over the last six months, really, to, uh, to really drive business engagement uh, from the university with the business community in Suffolk and uh, New Anglia generally. So hopefully, you know, the next few slides, we've got a couple, um, will we'll help, uh, you know, just let you know what we've got going on and possibly how we could work together. So we'll talk today a little bit more about our role within the community, how we work, the way that you can work with us today. Um, I think the, the university is well known in the region for its li lifelong learning and teaching, um, but we, we do play and hope to play uh, further in the future, a, a wider role in the, in the larger community. So our mission as a university is to transform lives and our region through education, training, research, business and community engagement. So we'll be particularly focused on the business engagement and the way we want to support the business community going forward today but we'll also talk about opportunities within research um, and 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 r d and innovation linked to businesses today as well and and talk through some of the the, the sort of courses and things we offer for our students as well so we uh, the university works in uh, is broken down into different areas of expertise and under which all of our courses and our research institutes fall. Um, so we have um, health and well-being is an area, sustainability, digital futures, crime and social justice, history and heritage and excellence in education. So all of the uh, business development managers, as Mike will tell you in a minute, cover these individual areas. So specifically, I look after anything that comes under digital futures and also sustainability. So um, this is the team that's been built just over the last few months. Um, so heading it up is Emma Wakeling, who has uh, come to us actually from the University of Essex, but she has also worked on Essex County Council and uh, knows the area, knows the, the you know knows the industry extremely well. So she's a fantastic resource. Um, and then reporting directly to her is the rest of the team. So we've got um, covering crime and social justice. We we love a long title at university. So some of these titles are really long. I won't go through them, but I will tell you which schools are um, are aligned with each person. So. Uh, India Green um, started just before me, in fact, and she is with the School of Humanities. Beth, as, as just mentioned, is creative and digital, etc., with the School of East uh, Engineering Arts, Sustainability and Technology. Is that right, Beth? Um, and then Science and Technology. Yes, I was thinking there's, there's, there's something missing in the middle there. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was an S. Um, and then Hannah Pierce is with the School of Health and Wellbeing, also covering the Integrated Care Academy. Um, I'm uh, leadership and management, which is very broad, and uh, but mostly I align with this, the business school and the leadership academy, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Then we've got Dr. Kenny Lang, who is our knowledge transfer partnership manager, and a very good man to know. He's uh, been doing that for quite a few years. 
Uh, Deborah Jindal is one of the few people who has um, been on board for a little while, and her role now is working with the ISET, which we'll talk about in a bit as well, which is the In Career Education Training Project uh, in cooperation with the European Social Fund. Um, so, and then Ruth has actually just left us, so we need to update that slide. Um, and then we've got Kathy and Sarah, who are administrators. So this is an interesting slide because I'm not going to read everything on here because what, what you'll see as I kind of cycle around here is what support can we offer businesses and organizations? And the, and the answer is an awful lot. So the best place to start really is, is with a conversation. So but just to give you the overview, you know, we, we do offer consultancy projects um, for if you're looking at a feasibility study or something of that nature, or a particular project that is uh, quite specialized. You know, we have the academics in the different schools that can cover almost anything. Um, and then we've got the, the more in-depth research knowledge transfer partnerships. And at some point, you probably want to talk to uh, Kenny Lang for the, the KTP opportunities, uh, because these are two year, typically two year partnerships between the university and a business, um, looking at some area of significant innovation and these are uh, heavily funded, so they're really quite valuable. Um, we also, of course, have our PhD students that can offer um, a, a great deal of expertise as they are completing their own projects, uh, together with internships and apprenticeships. Um, you know, we have a full careers department. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about the 3D printers. Um, this, this is something that we've had for a little while, but we're really ramping up now and we're going to be offering uh, expertise and partnership to businesses to use our 3D printing facilities. Um, and then another thing, of course, being a university, we do have access to the bodies that offer funding. We actually do offer some limited funding ourselves from time to time, um, but uh, we, we certainly have the expertise on board where we can help you as business owners find that funding and um, and also other help. I mean, there are training opportunities. There's a, there's a lot available to businesses if they know where to look for it. And that's what we're here to do is to help you do that. Um, and then, you know, our bread and butter really is the short course and CPD, Career Professional Development, um, which can be uh, customized to a degree to suit the needs of the business. So, and if you have ideas about the kind of, development your people need in, in a business, then uh, talk to us because we might already be thinking about that and just trying to think about how we apply that particular specialism. So um, as I said at the beginning, it just all starts with a conversation. Yep, so I'm going to talk about some of the, particularly some of the areas I cover. So some of the expertise um, uh, that we have within those areas and some of the type of projects that we do. Um, so I'm going to start by an introduction to our Digitech Centre, which some of you might know. This is a £9.6 million research and engineering facility based at BT Adastral Park. It's been developed in collaboration with BT and with support from New Anglia LEP. Um, and our space over there is designed to be a cutting edge um, skill center for students and a collaborative space offering state-of-the-art solutions for SMEs and businesses to work with us, a space for research and for knowledge transfer and for a, a, a collaborative space where we can work together under our digital futures pillars, which we have. And I'll explain a little bit more about the areas we cover under digital futures now. Um, so based over at, um, at Digitech Centre, we have our School of Engineering, Art, Science and Technology, which Mike mentioned earlier, which is one of the schools I primarily work with. Um, so all of our computing sciences courses are I'm mainly taught over at Digitech now. Um, we have different courses under the following areas. So we run an a, apprenticeship course with BT under, uh, in software engineering and network engineering, but we also run our BSCs in software and network engineering um, and our master's degrees uh, through Digitech Centre as well. We also have our master's in um, data science and artificial intelligence. So we have a, a, a large group of um, uh, academics working in this area. 
and teaching in this area and doing research in this area based over at Digitech. Um, cybersecurity is another area that we cover. Again, we have our courses in it and we have a large number of um, uh, academics working in this area who are research intensive working in this area of cybersecurity. We also have our um, BSCs in web and mobile development, um, which can be taken independently or as part of a wider computing science um, degree as well. So all of these courses now get to use the facilities over there, including our new cyber forensics lab, uh, which is being built and is able to be used by students at the moment and will be in turn able to be offered out to businesses to use um, potentially um, to use independently or predominantly to work with us on research projects um, that they may have. Um, so we cover under um, digital futures and within Digitech Centre, we have three main pillars I mentioned of research that we cover and that we predominantly work in and that we um, are very interested in working with businesses in as well. Um, so we have the technology future um, pillar, which is uh, for pure and applied research as well into technology central to the future. Um, specifically, this is focused on security, network, software and system, systems engineering. So I've put a few of our projects in here so you can have a look at the t uh, an idea of the type of projects we do under this and how you can work with us. So, for example, under the security strand, we have a PhD researcher working closely with our team on the application of deep learning to network threat detection. Um, in networks, we're currently building a future network research lab at our new Digitech Centre, which will enable um, research in this area we're very keen on developing. Um, in software and systems, we've recently completed the Smarter Suffolk project, which I know, Sam, you know about. Um, that's working with Suffolk County Council and was funded through the Department of Transport. That's been a two year project, I believe. Um, and the aim was to undertake a variety of scientific trials um, utilizing IoT sensors um, in the region and analysis uh, of the resulting rich data sets of environmental traffic and other conditions. Um, and the data was used to determine the validity of business cases and inform strategic adoption and strategic decision making within the region and on a wider level across the UK. Um, so that project is, is, is due to come to complete at the end of March, I think that's been a very interesting one. And that's come out of our Smarter Living Labs, which is based over at the Digitech Centre. We, another example of the type of project we do in this area around software, we've, we're in the middle of a KTP project uh, with a business called Coderus, who are based over at BT. Um, and the sort of topic and uh, of this one is software quality assurance. And so they're working with two uh, PhD researchers and a, a research associate um, on that project. KTP is a really interesting way um, of working with the university um, and embedding uh, expertise within your business. So during a KTP funded project, um, you can take on an RA to work within your business on a very specific innovation project to support um, R&D and growth within your business, but they will be supervised fully uh, from academics at the university. So you not only have a, a funded member of staff, you also have the academic supervision and rigor that comes with that uh, working with the university as well. They're a really interesting way to work with us on specific innovation uh, projects and um, we're always looking for uh, new KTP opportunities as well. So the second pillar that we have that comes under uh, Digitech and Digital Futures is Creative Futures. So this primarily runs through our games department, as well as the main computing science courses, we also run uh, uh, games courses. Um, so Creative Futures really addresses that intersection of creativity and digital. Um, we're specifically focused on strands um, in serious games, advancing games and AR and VR, um, with a growing element of uh, research in vision science and some new academics um, with particular interest in that area. So for serious games, we're looking for new opportunities um, where we can apply our expertise in gamification, visualization and simulation. Um, we have life sciences that comes under the School of East as well. Um, and so we can work quite closely. It gives puts us in a unique 
position really to to work on projects that are multidisciplinary and cross cross collaboratory and allow us to work um, across the different schools. So we're also in serious gains, particularly interested in the sort of crossover between health and well being, med tech, and, um, and and the use of games and gamification as well. So we are in uh, discussions about a number of projects in this area and always seeking new collaborations in that area. Um, in advancing games, um, we look at uh, improvements to gaming concepts and techniques, uh, which could benefit both serious games and entertainment game industry as well. Um, we've got a staff PhD project, particularly on this in this area that's underway. We've also managed to secure £20,000 worth of funding from Epic Games to create an Epic School Days programme to engage um, secondary school pupils within the games industry. And the feedback from that is being rolled out across the country um, uh, at, for, by Epic Games. We also, under the AR and VR strand, we did another KTP with Orbital Media or Orbital Innovations, which was for the MySpira app, which is an AR um, asthma training app. Um, it's it's a it's a sort of AR gamified um, uh, program which enables um, children, particularly, to learn how to use uh, inhalers and to use them correctly. Um, it's been really successfully trialled with children by collaboration with uh, members of our life science as I mentioned, life science department who are based within the School of East. And uh, the, initi the initiative has received widespread plaudits and been nominated for various awards. And um, it's being introduced uh, into the NHS um, as we speak, I believe. So that was, a, that was a successful KTP and a good example of working, working with us and uh, using our experience, but having somebody working within the business to develop um, an innovation in that way. And the third um, sort of pillar that we have under digital futures is usability and practice. So this is focused on usability testing of both software and hardware solutions. Um, we've recently completed a 100cc connected together project, which is a £1 million Innovate UK funded project. We worked with SME partners in usability testing of their software and hardware solutions. This was particularly focused on improving uh, solutions aimed at combating social isolation and lack of digital skills um, uh, this was this piece of work was started before COVID-19 but it's um, it was subsequently deployed amongst numerous councils uh, within the region and also on a, uh, on a more national level as well um, helping to combat um, uh, isolation during lockdown and uh, and be helping people to access digital resources uh, as well um, as, as tackling isolation. So that was rolled out in uh, numerous ways. So that was um, after we successfully looked at the usability of that. Um, we've also worked with Suffolk Libraries in preparation for a Nesta bid, which was um, successful after our uh, collaboration for their Happy Place project, which was a Tech to Connect finalist project, again, uh, working on um, using tech for good, that particular project. And uh, through some other external funding, we've worked with Suffolk Mind in the development of their online mental health um, materials as well. So before I pass back over to Mike, I'm just going to talk about the other area that I cover under, under my hat, which is quite uh, quite broad, digital, creative, energy and sustainability. So on one side, I'm working with digital and creative and the, the areas you've just seen. On the other side, I also work very closely with our Suffolk Sustainability Institute. Although at the University of West mentioned before, we're very clean on cross collaboration, working in a multidisciplinary way. So we do have numerous projects which cross over into all areas of the university university and um, welcome projects that, um, where we might be able to utilise expertise within different areas. So the uh, Suffolk Sustainability Institute is a new uh, is a new research institute, and the aim of it is to contribute to and lead on quality research, training, and innovation towards effective action on climate change, unsustainable use of resource resources, and the environment. 
Um, we're a small team of people, but we're growing quite quickly. So Professor Darrell Newport is heading up the Research Institute as director. He moved to us from the University of East London. Um, he is uh, a, a, a well, very well-known professor in this area of energy and sustainability. So he is leading, leading the work. Um, he works closely with Justine Oakes, who's our sustainability lead here at the university. And we have two new research fellows who are starting within his team within the next two months, Hannah, Dr. Hannah Stevenson and Dr. Alison Pooley as well. So we had a wider resource um, who are research intensive working within this area. And we, there's three, similar to the digital futures, where we have sort of three peers that we cover. We've got three main areas that we cover under the uh, SSI. So we have green infrastructure, which is looking at urban green infrastructure, sustainable rural economies and natural systems. Uh, we also look at sustainable, healthy communities. And here we're looking at smart, healthy living, community engagement and asset management. And we work very closely with our Institute of Health and Wellbeing on this area. And another area Area that's key for us is energy and resources management so energy efficiency and produ um, production um, and materials and en materials engineering for the built environment is a big area for us and waste and circular economy and I'll talk a little bit more now about a particular project we have in this um, built environment area so we are in the process of building a new um, uh, eco house demonstrator over at BT. It will be on the same site as the Digitech Centre, based just next door uh, or just slightly down the road from there. And the eco house demonstrator will be a, a, a test demonstration bed, which will allow um, new businesses to come in and test uh, and do materials processing, materials physical testing. Uh, we can it will be equipped to carry out and test on mechanical properties. Um, we'll also be able to do pro, uh, processing there, characterization center of materials will be equipped with a wide range of analytical instruments for um, materials and environmental science um, it's it will be a, a test bed that SMEs can use to come and uh, process and validate new materials and assisted their demonstration um, and application through connection to our networks and client groups um, so you can work with us closely on that research and testing element uh, for new uh, innovative products so we have a wide range of Business is interested in collaborating with us in this area at the moment. It's it's growing uh, very quickly. We're also the house is fully uh, fitted with sensors, so there's also areas that we can do that are more that we can test in that are further related to health and well-being, and moving into the med area as uh, medical area as well. So that's another. Uh, area that we could look at in the house. So this is being built as we speak at the moment, and it should be due to launch in April this year. Um, and once we launch, we'll be doing numerous tours and opening events and tours where people come and look at the space. You can come and meet the academics working there. You can find out more about ways to um, come and work with us and um, use the testbed demonstrator. So uh, other areas that we were particularly focused on at first as we start up in the SSI is energy efficiency. So the, the living lab, as well as being used for teaching and materials testing, we can also look at um, energy management systems in there. We'll be looking at plug and play solutions for new product opportunity, full digital laboratory solution for smart energy development. So there's a lot of crossover with tech and energy um, in the way that we can test um, new energy solutions. Um, we're particularly interested in um, group energy management um, and how we can deliver solutions um, working uh, working with large group energy systems. So we are particularly keen on testing those and being able to simulate them and, uh, and demonstration of them as well. Um, and we'll be able to test and monitor en energy production as well. So that's another area that will be um, open for uh, work with SMEs within the region and further afield around this area of energy efficiency. Great, well, I'm gonna give Beth a little breather um, <laughs> because there's a lot going on in her school as you, as you can see. So uh, I mentioned funding a little while back and um, although most of the funding does come from other agencies, now and again, we do get the opportunity at the university to be able to do some limited funding for, uh, for particularly for SMEs. 
And the innovation voucher scheme is, is one of these things. Uh, it's the first one we've been able to do in this iteration of the business team. So just looking real quickly at what is an innovation voucher when, when we're talking about it. So they do provide SMEs funding. Um, and, and I'll give you some examples in just a little bit. But it's a means of accessing academic skills and some of our expertise within the university in order to support your innovative projects and accelerate your business's growth. Um, so the projects, and we will work together on this, but they must be valued between these, these parameters. So it's between 5,000 and 15,000 pounds. And the way it works is that uh, the business is reimbursed 75% of whatever the project costs within those parameters. So um, the way it actually works is that you pay the full amount up front, and then we provide a reimbursement of 75% of that sum. And that reimbursement is a pretty quick turnaround, obviously, because we're not working through other agencies, it's just internally. So this is how we can help you. Um, it should really be centered on challenges that you're facing in your business um, and that you might just need a little bit of help uh, developing out. So there are a few different areas that, for example, um, th these, this could be helpful because these are the kinds of things that would be a really good fit for these innovation vouchers. So I mentioned feasibility studies, um, new business ideas, proofs of concept, developing prototypes, uh, looking at how to develop new products and services and maybe just exploring those a little bit. Um, simple problem solving and then testing out these new products and services. So it's a pretty broad range. Um, there's one that we're actually working on in the business school right now um, that is uh, a, a company that's been around for quite a long time. They're a manufacturing company and, and their product is fantastic, but they have virtually no marketing presence so they've been getting all their business, basically word of mouth and referrals and turning up at trade shows. So we're helping them put together a marketing strategy. So that would be something else uh, that could be a really good fit for, for one of these innovation vouchers. And I, now Beth's had, a very, Beth's had a very short break that I'm going to turn it back over to her to talk about internships. Thanks, Mike. Um, so another way that you can work with us is internships. So um, accessing student and graduate talent. So we do have some funded internships um, with us at the moment. They are small internships for up to a month, but businesses can provide a top up if they wanted someone for longer than that period of time. Um, so generally, internships are a great way to bring fresh new ideas to the table, provide your company with a different viewpoint when problem solving. We've also found that businesses are quite keen. We've got a couple in application at the moment where businesses are keen to take on a new role within the company, but they're slightly unsure and they're using it the internship as a way to see whether that explore whether that role works well within their business and also to get to know potential candidates before opening that that role up onto the market and um, and getting to see how they work together as well. So we've got a few opportunities like that at the moment. Um, you can take on with, with the funded internships we've got, you can take on a current student who's uh, studying at the moment on a part time basis we normally suggest one day a week to fit in around their studies and we suggest putting together a very specific project that you'd like a, a, an intern to work on or you can take on uh, apply for a graduate on a more full-time role for over the course of a month for example um, we do have some uh, as I said at the moment we've got one that's being advertised where it's part-time for the next few months and then they're looking at having a, a full-time role um, that's one uh, with a who are putting it out to our architecture students actually it's with a, a a business that does a building system solution and they have put together a very specific project um, where architects can come up with unique design ideas to showcase what their materials can do um, so there's uh, it's a really interesting project for the student to get their teeth into it will be showcased to clients so it's a great experience and also they have the the business has expertise which they don't currently have within the business um, but they're thinking but they will have a, a space for a new um, architect to work with them full-time from the summer so they're working with some internships building up to that so that works very well in that in that type of situation 
um, it's an application pr uh, process. So one of the nice things about the internships is that we take the university takes on all of the HR aspects of a project. So um, we'll advertise all roles on our future, my future platform so we can push them out to students and um, graduates. But then we'll ask businesses to shortlist and do all of the interview process themselves. But once you've found a candidate, UOS will process all of the HR side. So we'll deal with contracts and payroll and we'll deal with all of that side so that the business doesn't have to do that. So we make it nice and nice and smooth process. So applications are open for that as they are with innovation vouchers at the moment. And I know we'll open up for questions at the end, but um, we can absolutely discuss individual projects and how they might fit in um, to any of these um, uh, funding strands. They're all open for open for discussion. Um, the R&D Facilities Fund, this is something that we are launching. It's not available yet, but we will have some funding later on in the year um, for SMEs specifically to apply for, to use some of our facilities at the university. So that could be any of the things, some of the areas you've seen over at the Digitech Centre. Um, and one of the areas specifically we'll be promoting is our 3D productivity suite, which I think is the next slide here. Um, so we have a Stratus 3D uh, printer suite. Um, we had it online. It was, there was a brief pause during COVID when we weren't up and running, but we have a new technician on board and we will be working um, uh, to get this up and running by the beginning of February, it will be again. So we've got two key areas we're in, or we, that we have a good offer for and that we can discuss with businesses. One is additive manufacturing. Um, so our aim is to um, be able to offer affordable entry to additive manufacturing for local SMEs, um, high-end equipment to develop ideas. Um, we'll have a technician on board to support um, assistant in, uh, uh, and assist in operation and also design potentially as well. And the other application is in clinical research. So um, businesses that are looking to engage with NHS and the AHSN to discuss opportunities, prototyping, uh, fast prototyping, um, and also with a focus on products with the potential for NEHA fan, uh, funding there um, so we've got two sort of specific areas but we're also opening to open to discussing interest from SMEs about how they would like to use the 3D printer um, uh, how it's useful around this rapid prototyping um, as I mentioned we've got some funding for R&D facilities and that would cover the use of the 3D printer I think it's uh, similar to in innovation vouchers it will be 75% funded so what we do is come to us with a project we'd see how we could do it we'd see um, the, the cost of doing that and we could put together a, a, a project plan for you around that so that's something we'll be launching again um, from next month onwards A CPD, I've just got a quick one to go over here. Um, as Mike mentioned, we do lots of CPD. So we do CPD in all of the areas you've seen. Uh, we can we can do bespoke CPD specifically for a company or we run um, uh, spe uh, specific courses which run every six months across the year. Um, and I just thought I'd uh, plug this one a little bit because starting from February, we've got a, a, a free um, AI for Business Masterclass series um, coming up, which is run by Dr. Kakia Chatsu. Um, one of our AI academics here at the university. So these will be three, a one hour, I think they're one hour, one and a half hour sessions, one in February, one in March and one in April. Um, the first one will be looking at creating your own data strategy. The second one is from data to insights. And the third one is migrating to the cloud for smarter business. So I've just put the Eventbrite link up there so you can have a look at those different masterclasses and they will be followed up by full CPD courses later in the year, but they're sort of test the sessions to understand a bit more about um, what, what, what the courses will cover and uh, for people working who are new in this area and being asked to, 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 to um, bring up insights and uh, need some more expertise in this area. So we'll be starting those from February. Great. Thanks, Beth. And now we uh, come on to my, my little area, the Suffolk Business School. And specifically, I'm really going to be talking more about the Leadership Academy and um, the way these two entities work is that um, the Suffolk Business School is the, the overall um, entity that's focused on business education, as it, as it suggests. 
So that would include uh, in things like our Suffolk Executive MBA, the SEMBA, um, undergraduate degrees. Uh, we are writing degree apprenticeships right now in different areas. And uh, then we also have these areas of specialism, including accounting financial management, human resource management, uh, events and touring, uh, tourism, and uh, marketing. And then, uh, you know, we're looking to add a few more on, onto that list uh, during the course of this year. So um, the Leadership Academy is effectively the shop window for the business school, but it really is focused towards the business community rather than the student population. So it has a different kind of uh, slant on what we've got going on. So it's, uh, as it says, it's our home for executive education and for developing uh, the people in businesses with leadership and management skills. So uh, there's various ways we do that. Um, the, the Academy is headed up by Dr. Will Thomas. I work very closely with Will. And uh, some of you may have met him. He's, uh, he's local to Ipswich. He's lived here all his life and uh, is a super resource in, in many ways. Um, so the different types, I wanted to make this graphic a little better, by the way, it's nasty looking, I know, so I apologize, but it's, it tells you what we have. So um, as, the, uh, as the list goes down, theoretically, the value of the offering goes up. So, you know, we, um, we have not yet established a blog. Um, that's something that's in the works, but uh, that along with social media posting and awareness raising, which is in things including networking, what I'm doing right now, of course, with Beth. Um, and then down from there, free webinars and presentations. We started in, the, we're running these on the last Friday of each month, um, and they are free online webinars, essentially where um, we're getting people to talk about a particular area that they specialize in. These are a mixture of our own people, our own academics and outside people who have uh, what we think is something we'd really love to share. So um, we're not actually having one the last Friday of this month because we just didn't have the time to promote it adequately, um, but we will be running two in February. So those will be promoted. And um, to give you an example of the kind of topics we talk about, um, one was uh, to do with, it was actually Jenny Holland, Dr. Jennifer Holland, our uh, events and tourism lecturer. She's a, a world expert actually in ocean cruising, but particularly in risk. So it was talking about risk in the tourism industry, but really um, it applied to anybody who has a business that is, you know, somewhat seasonally and, uh, you know, co consumer related. So it was, uh, it was really interesting. Um, so uh, then we have half day workshops. These are typically facilitated by outside contractors that we work with. Again, they're thoroughly vetted and um, we've got a whole new series of those coming up. Um, and then qualificatory courses. There, there are a couple of these that we run uh, mostly through the events and tourism side right now. Um, but we are looking at doing some things with, uh, with risk management, with uh, event management and uh, crowd control. And then at the, uh, the top end of the scale or the bottom end of the slide, uh, we, we have the things that we've already talked about a little bit, that are bespoke training, knowledge transfer partnerships, consultancy and research. Within this, the, qualific the qualificatory courses, it'd be nice if I could say it, um, that I might describe it, but uh, specifically what we are working with right now is the Institute of Leadership and Management, ILM. So we have courses coming up that are level three certificate and level five certificate, um, which are really valuable, probably more for uh, a slightly larger SME and uh, certainly for larger organizations, but these are excellent courses that are written by one of our lecturers. And uh, it's a combination of in-person online sessions. Uh, so we alternate on those and uh, we're looking to be uh, running those again towards the end of spring. So we'll be signing up uh, from now on really. So the Entrepreneurs Forge is, uh, we've been talking about this for a while and it's on us now. So it actually starts at the beginning of February. Um, this is uh, in two parts. So the first part is for students. It's uh, what we're calling a boot camp. So it's essentially for uh, business students uh, doing their master's program that are 
um, interested in owning their own business, becoming entrepreneurs themselves. So that's a, a, they're doing a course of study. Parallel to that is what we're calling the mini MBA, um, which is the, uh, as it says, it's an immersive development program. So this is for owners of small businesses. We're looking really at specifically digital and creative type businesses. Uh, which is a pretty broad category, um, you know, and we are applying that fairly uh, liberally. Um, but the program is available to business leaders like the people on this call from all sectors, including voluntary and, uh, and charity in Suffolk. So it's for you. Now, if, you're, if you've been in business a little while, so you've got revenues, you've, you've, you can show turnover, you can show that you're growing as a business, you're adding employees, for instance, um, you, so you're ready to grow a, a little bit more and you want to scale it and make sure you do it right. Um, you want to gain a little bit more confidence as you scale up. I know it's a challenge for a lot of entrepreneurs as their business starts to grow. It's a different skill set. So this is a way to actually start adapting, adopting some of those skills. Um, and similarly, you know, if you want to develop your business, and you know, through discussion with the, the academics who are taking these sessions and your cohort peers, start navigating these post-pandemic challenges. So it, we've, we've actually got this as a seven week uh, development program. Um, and each one of the weeks is gonna be taken by uh, a different, an academic from a different part of the business school. So I'll go through the modules in just a second, just to show you the kind of breadth that, that, uh, that we're gonna be sharing. So what will you get from it? Um, you will have a growth plan because that's something that you will be developing um, and you will be working on together with your cohort peers. So it will give you tools, frameworks and practices. It will help you with a self-reflecting understanding understanding and acceptance of the unique offer. This is really important because this is a fully funded program. There is no financial cost to the business for this, but there is an investment of time. Um, so anybody who comes into this program needs to be able to commit to the whole thing. But it does give you that window that business owners quite often don't have to just take a look, take a pause and reflect on what it is you're building. So to be able to join the network, to, join a network, but also build a network within the, the cohort, We're looking at up to 20 businesses. So it's a, it's a good size group. So eligibility. So in terms of business qualifications, must be based in Norfolk or Suffolk, must be an SME between five and 249 people, must have been around for at least a year and must have creative or digital elements or projects. So uh, the last bullet, as I mentioned, is, is pretty broad. Um, the, and if you are close on some of these, but not quite there, please talk to us anyway. You know, the, the, these are guidelines. Um, so, and then as an individual to, uh, to join the mini MBA program, you must be a senior decision maker. So you need to be essentially an owner of the business um, in some shape or form. Um, and only one person per business can attend. So, and the, the other part I've already alluded to, which is you must commit to the whole thing completing all sessions. Uh, and we are looking at a hybrid, uh, hybrid's probably the wrong word. We're looking at um, doing some of the sessions, three of the sessions will be in person, the other four will be online. So I'm not gonna read through this whole thing, but just to give you a sense of what this thing looks like. So the half day sessions running over seven weeks, with the, so it's starting on the 2nd of February, ends on the 23rd of March. So we, we were gonna skip, we're gonna skip the 23rd of February because that's during half term. Um, so uh, the, the total length is eight weeks and with seven weeks of sessions. So um, it's a half day from one till five. Um, and it's gonna be a combination of, of uh, joint activities, instruction activities, and then obviously a break to, to give you a breath. Um, and we are looking at having some guest speakers along as well. So module one, uh, just what we're looking at is um, just a welcome for the group, uh, which will be relatively brief, and then some, some uh, reflection and creativity. Um, and then module two is gonna be uh, with one of our change management specialists. 
and looking at that strategic element of the growth that you want to do and um, being creative and innovative along the way. Um, marketing and sales. Um, so we, we have uh, somebody who is a, a particularly a digital marketing expert, but also branding experts. She spent many years as the head of marketing for a large, digi uh, for a large retail organization. Um, so and then uh, module four, our entrepreneurial uh, lecturers will be taking module four to develop the participants' entrepreneurial skills. Um, module five, looking at uh, creating those opportunities for growth within your uh, within your business with new products and services, and and then empowering teams. Um, so it's not just about you as the business owner. You you have to build your team at the same time. So and then pulling it all together with a graduation. And then uh, hopefully some kind of a social event if we're allowed to do that. So that's the Entrepreneurs Forge. Um, and before I move on to the marketing labs, uh, the official close date for applications for the Entrepreneurs Forge is this Friday, 21st. But we are continuing to take applications. We just have a handful of places left. We've got one more application in today. Um, all of them look good so far. So I don't think we'll be kicking anybody off. Um, but if you're interested, please get hold of uh, either Beth or myself, and we'd be very happy to, um, to talk you through it and, and help you with the application if that's what you want to do. Um, so moving on. So the Marketing Lab is uh, something that uh, Claire Kelly, who is our uh, marketing expert, as I mentioned before, she's a, a lecturer in marketing and, and digital and social media. And um, she's created these labs as a way of uh, engaging the students with real businesses by providing value to those businesses. These are at no cost to the business. And the way it works, it's essentially uh, the business owners or whoever is in charge of marketing or will come into the university. Um, we basically sit down for an hour with a, a panel of marketing students that Claire selects. She will be essentially the chair and moderator of the, of the lab. She sounds very formal. Um, we have a room called the Ideas Room, which has a big black glass wall. And we use that to, uh, to basically brainstorm and, and create the ideas that uh, will form the basis of the marketing plan. So uh, the business comes in, talks about the, the challenge that they're facing, um, and then the, the panel then takes as much information from the business owners as they can. And then at the, at the end of that little session, it's usually about an hour, basically the, the business owner gets um, kicked out for a bit. Luckily, we have a cafe in the building right outside the room. So uh, it's a good opportunity to get a coffee for half an hour. While the, uh, while the panel deliberates. Then, the, uh, then you go back in and uh, they reveal their plan for you, essentially. What happens from there is after some discussion, Claire then follows up with the business owner with a written marketing plan based on these discussions. And then there's a mutually agreed follow-up that will happen usually one to two weeks later. So it's a quick hit, really. So if, for instance, could be a business having struggling with social media marketing, um, could be looking at trying to promote a new product and doesn't know how to do it. So these are, you know, just quick, uh, quick jolts that uh, that could help business just stimulate the business to uh, to move to a different level with a particular problem. So benefits to the business. Um, you, you'll get to meet with a bunch of very, very creative people. These are really, very, they are, these people, it says hungry, they really are hungry. After the first one we did, I, I talked to some of the students afterwards, and they all said it was the most valuable session they'd done because they actually saw that, that what they were learning wasn't an abstract concept. They got to see that the, the marketing of a business is really one of the key determinants of whether it succeeds or not. So... Um, for the students, that really gives them a real-life marketing insight. Um, it gives you, as a business owner, it gives you some free marketing support. So it really is a win-win. And of course, for the university, it gives us, hopefully, some nice little case studies that we can publish. That is it from me and in terms of presenting. Um, Beth, do you have anything to add at this point? 
No, I think just to say, um, there's it, it feels like a lot of information because there's so mm -hmm. many areas we work in at university, and there's so many different ways to collaborate, and um, and always the first point of contact is really to contact one of the business development teams. So myself and my to understand what your business is looking for, what support you need. Um, and then we can talk about how we can help you and what we can do and what we have on offer that might be beneficial to you. And if you know, you can come to us with a very specific idea of a project, you may come to us with a wider funding application, you need a HEI partner to work on that. You may come to us with it with a problem within your business that you want solved. Um, um, or you may come to us with an area you want to understand feasibility. Could we do something in that area? We then look at the academics and the expertise in that area and we will join up that conversation. We will bring other people into the conversation. We will see what we could do. We could see what a project Y might look like. We can see how that will um, what that would cost or how, whether there's funding available. And so it all starts with that first conversation, really, to understand what your business needs and how we can support you best, because there are, as, as, as you can see, so many different different avenues and ways to work with us. So yeah, we're happy to. Yeah, sorry, Mike. So no, sorry. Sorry about that. No, I was just going to basically, you know, agree with you and just say that, yeah, it's 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 difficult to avoid when you're sort of trying to introduce something so broad to avoid it being a little bit of an information dump. So, um, but if there's anything there that, that kind of caught your eye or that made you think, oh yeah, I'd like to know a little bit more about that, please, yeah, just get in touch and we're, we're happy to just have a cup of coffee and chat with it, chat about it. Thank you very much. Martin's referenced in the chat to me and said, is there any possibility you could give, for example, Mike, you've mentioned the blog, when you get that list up, either a blog about all of them or a blog about each of them, we're happy to share that so we can kind of keep a centralised um, set of information. Yeah. We have some additional content coming out. So we are originally at the ISTM, we were just the original board. Now we've got the different groups have created a sort of group of group leaders. We've got the masterclass, which is much older people in digital technology looking kind of at regulation, et cetera. And then we've got 20, there'll be 20 sponsors again. So I can't help but feel like all of the information that you put in that kind of granular fashion, like they're all people who need to be told that. So we've got everybody put into groups. The other kind of group I'm really keen to pull together is generally education. Like how do we as a group efficiently bring any opportunity? So there's Cyber East launched this week. So it's always for me about that two way dialogue to make sure, you know, everything you've said in this verifies that you guys are doing the right job. All of that sounds amazing. But we just want to make sure we're, like, you're properly embedded into the business community. And that does feel like sort of partly, partly our responsibility. Um, so, for example, you've got John Matthews on the call just to put you in the spotlight. John, John's a good example of someone who's super, super well connected. I've known John for a long time. One of the, I mean, John now I work more closely with, but um, it wouldn't be unusual for me to be on John's email list of kind of like, have you heard of XC following? So there's a certain amount of kind of people, if we can, if you can just keep us on your regular email list, we can make sure that that information is disseminated to the most important people as quickly as possible. So we definitely make that happen. All good, right. Has anyone got any questions? Kennedy, this feels like, being a superhero, this feels like your your territory. Kennedy started up a years ago. A group is is in the chat. A, a group called um, Mike. sorry, no, Mike. He says Kennedy started years ago. A group called um, Digital Superheroes. So the aim was to uh, just offer support to anyone who didn't understand technology, which always seems like a, a genius idea that we should revisit as soon as possible. Um, anyone else got any questions for these guys? The obvious one is, is there a landing page at the University of Suffolk that points to um, the sort of things you were talking about? You just put up the, the two email addresses um, for Beth and Mike. So is there, a, is there a landing page where someone who's doing a search is going to find so that they get this sort of entry point? Or, or, or is that something that, that needs um, developing? 
Yeah, so well, I'll pop, it in, the, yep, I'll pop it in the chat. Aha, at, there is one. I thought uh, there would yep. be. <laughs> I'll pop it in the chat. So we have our general business engagement page of the uh, of of the university, which points to the sort of things we can do and how we can work right. with you. And we've got a little animation on there about how you can do consultancy, research, um, different ways to work with us. So that is all being updated because we are, I mean, I mean, there's good information on there, but it's also um, needs to be updated. We're, we're a new team. So um, there's been a, a big investment in the university on uh, uh, how we work in, within knowledge exchange and business engagement as well. And so now yeah. our new team's on board. Some of that information is being updated to be a bit more reflective of the, the amount of work we do, I think. Um, right. So, But we definitely have a homepage where you can go and find the different ways to work with us. It's, it's slightly split up because if, for example, you said... Um, I have a, a an AI project I'm really interested in, or a, a cybersecurity project. I, I need a, an expert with this. That might not be on our business development page. That might say how you can connect with us, and then we can connect you. But you also can go into um, the Digitech Centre, for example, or that side, and and see some of the academics working in uh, in that area if you want to. Right. But an easier entry point is always to speak to us because we can send you individual research profiles and say, ah, there's this person doing this project. They're yeah. doing this. This is their areas of research. Here's their research profile. Have a look through some of the things they've done. Does this sound yeah. like the sort of area you want to connect? on this is the type of thing they specialize in how does that work with the project so um coming into the main business development is usually the easiest way to navigate uh the particular expertise you're looking on because that's when it comes <laughs> sometimes get challenging to find it um on our okay. website sometimes um, yeah, that's, that's a kind way of putting it beth um <laughs> just speaking for the leadership academy um you know i mean i, I don't want to call it our web presence a catastrophe but it, it's certainly not adequate right now and uh, will thomas and i are uh, redesigning that site and um we we have to work within the template that the university has given us right uh, so it's not gonna it's never gonna look like exactly how we like it but um the, there's something that we're creating that we're calling the leadership journey so for instance if you go in as an individual and it will ask you you know first of all are you looking for yourself or for your team if it's for yourself where are you on that journey so what, yeah. it will just bring you to you know the, the areas that we, we believe would be maybe most most relevant to you and, and from there we can have a conversation, but at least you'll have got some information beforehand. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Fantastic. Right. Any other questions, guys? Hi, uh, Sam. Sorry, I found the mic. I can speak. Can you hear me? <laughs> We've got you. Thanks, Kennedy. Ask away. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, the superheroes is a, is a good idea. I was I'd be thinking about re well, reviving it once we have the lockdown, the pandemic's over, because it's still not very safe to really meet up at the moment. But there's something I think about doing. But Going back to the universities, um, I, I mean, I happen to have actually uh, an MBA. I actually, got two of them: the one from London Business School and one from Columbia Business School. And I, I think there's something to. I know you're, you're trying to start program to link all the business together to create an environment that the, the university became like a center point of like innovation and business going and networking, etc. And I think there's also something to learn from London Business School as well, where they. Um, they have something like they have business mentors, which uh, there are about eight of them that a certain day of the week, they're actually on campus where any of the graduates uh, or business can go and meet them as an appointment so they can talk about ideas, etc. And they also run a lot of like um, regular sessions, like what you're doing, like either online or in person about experts sharing their business ideas. And maybe sometimes you can find an alumni that has done some great thing or someone's very senior in the business, they can come and give the experience and what they did and how they overcome leadership or management or change or growth, etc. I think we can learn a lot from what other people have done as well, as well as creating our own. I think there, there, there are a lot to do in that area. I'm happy to talk to Beth and Mike a bit more if you want to. Um, yeah, I'd love to, Kennedy. Yeah, that sounds really good. I made a note, actually. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I'll I give you my email address here on the on the chat and if you want to email me uh feel free to do so yeah great Fantastic. thank you guys right i'm gonna are there any more questions anybody no we're over seven o'clock and some of us have got to go to an owas meeting 
um, which if you go to OWASP Suffolk chapter, there is a talk tonight about getting started in ethical hacking, which I know will be interesting because it's from David, who has been looking at this for about a year now. So it's very much his baby. Um, visit istn.org.uk to see what other events are happening this month and next month. We have a whole stream around connectivity, IoT, cybersecurity, uh, lots of different, lots of different um, cryptocurrencies. I see w Web three. That will be another set of topics coming. So that's been an interesting. Um, we think they might have another group coming to the table about Web three, which will be interesting. Um, so we've got lots more stuff happening. Keep an eye on the website, keep an eye on the events, sign up for updates and you get it straight to your inbox. But other than that, thank you so much to Beth and, jo Beth and Mike for coming along to this evening to speak to us. If you've got any inquiries, get in touch with both of them or any of the business development um, experts at, at the University of Suffolk. Other than that, we will see you at our next event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, great. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks, Sam. Bye-bye.